Welcome to the November 30th meeting of the Murphy Express City Council. Uh, Council Member Eddie Smotherman has our prayer and our pledge. If you would, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the, another beautiful day uh, in this wonderful city of Murfreesboro. We pray for our country and the leadership of our country. We pay, pray for our state and our leadership of our state. And tonight we pray for this council and the local governing body. We hope that we make the right decisions and I hope we make you proud. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we have a group here tonight that want to introduce them. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think one of my fellow leadership Rutherford mates back in Year, what year was it, Jamie? 1998. So uh, we have Leadership Rutherford here, who's here tonight. We have Youth Leadership Rutherford. So if you're with Youth Leadership Rutherford, if you wouldn't mind standing up. Stand up. All right. <laughs> Glad y'all are here tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, you've got the consent agenda in front of you. You've got a few items. Uh, is, is there anything that needs to be removed from the consent agenda. Hearing none, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Uh, you have second readings. Uh, Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 17 OZ 53 to rezone an area along Halls Hill Pike as commercial fringe CF, CF district. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Same. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 17 OZ 54 to rezone an area along Stones River Mall Boulevard as Park P District. Move for passage. Second. Motion and second. Mr. Rocker, call the rule. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Same. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 17 OZ 55 to rezone an area along West Lytle as Central Business Development CBD Districts 2017 432. Move for passage. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Schreiter, call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Same. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 17 OZ 56 to rezone an area along Ragland Avenue as Planner Residential Development, PRD District, Walker Station, PRD. Move for passage. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, we'll call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. That's same. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move to new business. We have considered for uh, some certificates of compliance for wine and retail stores. Circle K 3716-1702 South Rutherford Boulevard. Circle K 3718-2610 South Church Street and Circle K 3699-3401 Memorial Boulevard. Ms. Wright. Mayor, this is a part of the package that these locations have to turn into the state in order to be approved for the sale of wine. They have met our requirements and they are all new locations. So everything is in order? Yes, sir. One motion or three? One. I think one would be fine. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, we'll call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for recommendations of the Transportation Director a contract with Neil Schaefer for design and construction engineering services for the Adapted Signal Control Technology ASCT project on Rutherford and Northville Boulevard. Mr. Kerr. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. <clears throat> to give you a little background, um, 
Through TDOT's uh, Competitive Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality CMAC grant program, the City of Murfreesboro submitted a proposal for an adaptive signal control project for Rutherford, for Rutherford and Northfield Boulevard from Southeast Broad Street to Highland Avenue. The intent was to add Rutherford Boulevard to the city's inventory of interconnected arterial systems to achieve coordinated benefits along this corridor as had been a, has been previous, uh, previously achieved in other interconnected and coordinated systems. TDOT awarded the city the grant request in December of 2016. Subsequently, the city council approved a contract with TDOT on June 8, 2017. The project in, in general would consist of upgrading 14 signalized intersections, adding pedestrian signal timing elements at four new locations, nine CCTV cameras, and approximately nine miles of fiber optic cable for communication back to the traffic operations center. The adaptive signal system will use real-time algorithms through various centers and inputs to predict traffic flows at levels to enable proactive control of the signal system. I'd like to mention that not all corridors are candidates for this type of system. Rutherford Boulevard was selected due to the inconsistent traffic patterns, somewhat controlled access, as well as moderate traffic volumes. Since this project involves the programming and expenditure of federal funds, acquisition of professional services require compliance with the Brooks Act, wherein the city is required to issue requests for proposals and select the most qualified firm based on relevant experience and technical abilities with the calls for services to be negotiated. On July the 19th, 2017, the Transportation Department received statements of qualifications and letters of interest from consulting firms to perform the desired professional service services for the project. The city's consultant evaluation committee has selected Neil Schaefer from the two shortlisted firms to provide the professional services associated with this project and have negotiated a professional service time and material contract in amount of four hundred eleven thousand four hundred and twenty dollars services include tdot and fhwa coordination traffic data collection system engineering analysis report preliminary and final signal design preliminary and final pedestrian design preliminary and final fiber optic communication and cctv design utility coordination utility make ready documents environmental documents initial timing plan development and to assist the city in the ac ASCT vendor selection, develop contract documents and plans, and assist the city in the bid process. Please note this contract includes construction engineering inspection that is not part of the scope of work and will be negotiated at a later date once construction plans and schedules have been developed. The original design budget and the current TIP, Trans uh, Transportation Improvement Plan of the Metropolitan Transportation Planning Organization for a total of $373,700, which are all federal dollars. The contract price being recommended is for $411,420, leaving an unbudgeted deficit, deficit of approximately $37,720. This difference will be, pre, will be reprogrammed in the future from existing construction funds if needing, and those are all federal dollars. Uh, this project is currently in the MPO's 2040 Regional Transportation Plan in, in the MPO's 2017-2020 Transportation Improvement Program Capital Budget. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the design and construction engineering service contract between Neil Schaefer and the City of Murfreesboro. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Also in the audience is Greg Judy with Neil Schaefer. Any questions for Mr. Kerr on this contract? Jim, I think you did a really good job of covering it. You made a comment that uh, uh, there was variables involved with some signalized intersections, and I think you used Northfield and Rutherford intersection to kind of say that's one of the good examples because of the presence of the university, I'm assuming, and the, the influx of traffic when school's in and, and the lack of traffic maybe when school's out and the signalized situation that could be improved with this system. I think that's a very good example. Uh, I was reading the report that you also sent out earlier today involving TDOT that uh, we uh, we have like 10 signalized intersections within three miles, I think, of I-24 on Medical Center Parkway as well as 04 Parkway. Are, are, 
I mean, there's 20 intersections right there. Are those exempted because of the consistency or of, of the traffic flow, or is there any variable that you would see within those that would require maybe this signaliza signalization program to be expanded at some point? Well, uh, those locations we're currently we currently have our closed loop systems. Uh, they are. Uh, a little bit more predictable the, and, and a little bit heavier volume. The adaptives are, 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 are more catered for moderate volumes with more restricted to some degree uh, access as well as uh, 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 the, the variation. So, I mean, we will be uh, working with TDOT uh, in the, you're talking about the I-24 corridor that I sent you guys. Correct. We will be working with those guys on timing plans and implementation associated with that project. Okay. Did that answer that question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real good answer. Thank you. I think we just need a motion. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second for the approval of this contract. Ms. Wright, we'll call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. We'll now consider recommendations of the fire and rescue chief uh, regarding approval of uh, to hire Johnson and Bailey Architects for architectural services for the new fire station on Blaise Drive. Mayor and Council, uh, this uh, is to approve the for the architectural services, which would be architectural services, uh, bid process services, and uh, construction management services for the construction of Station 11, uh, which is on Blaze Drive, just adjacent to Blackman High School. Uh, we're actually going to locate the station a little ways back from the intersection to enable us to get out better uh, both during school traffic and other peak flows of the daytime uh, and evening hours uh, in that area but uh, johnson and bailey uh, would be the architects on this firm and be for the con for all the design phases of the uh, station i can answer any questions if you have any chief we've had some discussions uh, about fire stations and building them and paying architects and paying consultants and even though we just paid somebody 37,000 more than we budgeted on a consulting basis, we're trying to avoid that. Yes. Um, are, you know, since we're trying to build these, you know, uh, the term doesn't really do it justice, but more kind of a cookie cutter design. Have we taken any, uh, are we going to take any action on this to where we, we can save some money in the future? Yes, we're actually developing a kind of a, I guess a template type fire station, cookie cutter template, Better word, whatever you want to use, um, but a template style fire station that will cut down in design cost as well as hopefully in construction cost in the future um, from learning different construction <coughs> methods and et cetera. Um, this architectural firm would be who we would likely use to do these <laughs> other, other stations that we have coming in the future, replacing the station three, station six. Uh, do, you, do you anticipate, I guess I'll ask you more specifically, do you anticipate that the contract that we set up with Johnson and Bailey next time is going to be less than what we pay them this time? Yes. Right. And, and he, what, uh, what they have agreed to is basically this sliding scale that we're using to encapsulate all the buildings that we are going to be building under Johnson and Bailey to, to where that scale slides downward. Um, we're using the state scale fee schedule for the architects and when that when the dollar amount goes up on the projects that that sliding scale of fee rate goes down so if we use them on future projects that fee rate would would slide downward because it would just add to this this project all right one last question we got budgeted 2.7 million bucks yes is it going to come in at less than 2.7 million bucks we are we plan to sir <laughs> it's not good enough but okay <laughs> I think we've had a lot of discussions, you know, even in our last CIP about the engineer or the architecture and engineering staff of designing a building that is in that budget. So I, I, I think we've, you know, all made that clear that I, I hope the architects, because we will bid this out, correct, the, yes. the construction. So I, I, I think the good thing on, on the low bid, if they design, if the architects design something that is more expensive than from the bid, then it's their responsibility to design it to get it back to where it needs to be so without us paying them more for and that. per this contract they will be taking it all the way through johnson and baylor will be responsible for both the design the bidding of the project as well as construction management right. we've been carrying that message clearly to the architectural firms right now okay yes all right if no for, go ahead madam no 
I was just going to make the motion. You go ahead. Get it. Well, hold on just a second. One more right. question. There you go. I, I thought I remembered from the and, and the one request <laughs> for next time, the copy of the contract was marked up and corrected. So I'd rather have a clean copy. So yes. we know the co contract that you sign is the contract we look at because there were some several corrections and additions that are. Yeah, I apologize staff, for that getting put in the that. council agenda as a I thought I remembered in there something about 40 percent it related to that is that was that as a a figure do you, additional buildings that were uh, the contract fee what, am I right uh, well, it, it, I think the contract on this one the sliding scale fee on this one was about 6.7 or 6.8 percent was the total fee and, and we and duplicated that's a, that without the precinct modification that's in that in that design. I thought I thought I read somewhere about council. You may be referring to how they divided up their fee because they did divide up their fee by the different low, the different areas of service that they're providing. And um, I don't think there was a if you added thirty percent plus or ten percent for it. Uh, other administrative costs, I think you get to the 40%. So that's that may be where that came from, but that wasn't their I fee. That's how they're dividing their fee. Substantial savings in duplicating this template in the next. Yes. Uh, I, I thought that was a good uh, a, a good savings, and I just right. Yeah, <coughs> stuck in my head that it was 40%, but maybe not. But again, maybe the cleaned copy of the contract might help. And, I, and I apologize for that edited copy getting in there with the markups. I got you. Motion to second. Ms. Wright, the call roll. I don't think we did get a motion second. <laughs> we did. Because I think Bill stopped to ask quiet. another question. Madeline had a motion. Okay. And I Rick. make a motion. Okay. Rick had a I move that we accept Perfect. the Chief's recommendation. Second. <laughs> motion to second. Ms. Wright, the call Vice roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Uh, we have approval to accept donation a donation uh, that we're very thankful for from Bridgestone of America LLC. Yes, this is a this is a donation from Bridgestone of America's LLC. Uh, the actual donation is coming. Um, their emergency manager uh, for Bridgestone. They have these trailers that they deploy called uh, Bridgestone Emergency Response Team trailers. Uh, deploy them across the southeast. This is a picture of the actual trailer that we're going to have donated to us. Um, They've acquired a new trailer that they're converting into their emergency response trailer, and they uh, essentially ask us if we would like to accept the donation of this trailer. The estimated value of this vehicle is about $350,000 yeah. um, outfitted inside. Uh, the generator and all those components are along the front of it, as well as um, it's in, in, I'll show you some pictures of the inside as well. But the, um, this is some of the pictures of the inside. It's very well built for incident command type situations. Uh, if we were to have any major incidents such as um, the rally that we just incurred or, or different events such as the Good Friday tornadoes or other events here in town that we were to have major hazardous material incident or a technical rescue, we could utilize this trailer for those. This is the area in the back and the, the picture I just showed you before was in that corner um, right there where uh, Battalion Chief Alexander is standing and this is kind of coming from the mid part of the trailer looking back toward the front um, Again, this is the this actually was a car hauler for an Indy Racing League team And so it was converted into more of an office incident command type space. It's wired uh, network wise for printers and, and other computer needs that we would have it's got a lot of storage in it this is looking from the midpoint to the back of the trailer and the rear doors uh, as well as a small little kitchenette area back there for the incident command team. This is the area just above the, the tractor wheels on the very front of the trailer. Um, and this is the other part of that area up front uh, of that particular trailer. So we are very excited to have been offered the donation from Bridgestone. We think it'll have multiple uses both here in Murfreesboro as well as um, Murfreesboro is the host city for the uh, Middle Tennessee incident management team for the statewide mutual aid system. That's really nice. We're really blessed as a city. That's really nice. Is there some requirement to deploy another 
incidences or something it didn't matter in the contract? It's not necessarily a requirement because Bridgestone's not putting those requirements on us as far as the donation goes, but as you're well aware, we've been very involved in the Tennessee mutual aid system with responses to Gatlinburg, South Carolina, right. et cetera, and, and we are the host agency for the for the all hazards incident management team and it's worth noting that we use the all hazards incident management team or members of that team to develop the incident action plan for uh, the rallies downtown uh, as well as multiple other incidents that we've responded to across the state through that team so we would plan to deploy it uh, if it's requested just as we would any of our other resources that are needed in other jurisdictions where are you going to store it uh, for now out behind station 10 on on the access road um, behind station 10 and then we're going to look for you know more permanent storage where we can kind of cover it what are you gonna pull it with well right now we uh bridgestone has told us if we need to take it out of town for deployment they would come get it and take it wherever we need to take it uh, in town um, the water resources department has a couple of tractors that they have that we could utilize uh, to deploy it at this point in time and the fire department has about 10 personnel that are certified as CDL drivers. If there's All no right. further questions, I think that's an excellent. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion second, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Approval, uh, we had next consider approval to lease a rehab emergency support trailer. <laughs> Um, along the same lines of the emergency response and, and major incidents um, this is a lease agreement with the Tennessee Federation of Fire Chaplains uh, the Tennessee Federation of Fire Chaplains supports uh, these rehab restroom trailers all over the state of Tennessee uh, this is a picture of the trailer um, I think that I'm not sure if this is the exact one we're getting but it's very similar if this is not the exact one um, but it's essentially a restroom facility on a trailer that has um, a bathroom as well as a shower that we dedicated to this this would be essentially again for major incidents or any kind of events that we're having here that we could use this locally we actually used a trailer from the Dixon fire department that was provided to us for the rally uh, that we had last month it was provided on I guess on the north side of the square for the officers located on that side of the square to be able to utilize in a parking lot there uh, we borrowed that from Dixon um, this just adds another component to that we have used multiple of these trailers over the last couple of years with firehouse expo both at the training site and etc uh, they are they are very handy to have in an environment because uh, some environments it's almost impossible to get uh, portalettes out there in a, in a time of effective manner as well as having those facilities if we were to be responding to a major hazardous materials incident or otherwise we would have decontamination provisions with the shower inside the trailer um, but this is the looks of the trailer this is the uh, equipment in the back uh, for that services the trailer including the generator as well as the pumps for the water and the hot water heater and etc um, and then this is the picture of the inside of the trailer and what it looks like is um in the fiscal impact it says the one-time payment of thirteen thousand five hundred dollars for the lease term of ten years will come from the budget is it one time thirteen thousand five hundred or is it thirteen five hundred a year for ten? one years? time thirteen thousand five hundred dollars for the life of the trailer and we anticipate extending that lease I know that the first trailers that they built were built probably 15 years ago or longer and they're still in service and so those this lease is extendable and the good component about this lease agreement instead of purchasing the trailer on on our own first of all this cost about thirty thousand dollars to build tennessee federation of fire chaplains wants to kind of make these deployable throughout the state and that's our only caveat is to be able to deploy this but they also maintain this trailer if something goes wrong with the generator if something happens with the system uh, that's on this as far as the water system or anything like that goes they are going to maintain the trailer i'll move for approval Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. We have a letter from the Assistant Planning Director with regards to the Murfreesboro 2035 Comprehensive Plan, 2017 S101. Mr. Whitaker. Good evening, Mayor. I'm not the Assistant Planning Director, but I'll try to sit in for him tonight. Uh, first, if I can, 
I'd like to take just a brief minute to talk to you about a special census we're conducting. Uh, I can't get in front of the <laughs> camera with it, without plugging the census. Since the planning department has uh, been handed this census, anytime I get in front of camera, I'm going to talk about it. We have done the first mail out and we had about a 34% response. We have actually this week set out the second mail out. Anybody watching, if you get that card, please fill it out. Send it back in to us. Uh, we're going to try some other media uh, acknowledgments for this, but this is worth possibly in excess of $2 million to the taxpayers that we can get our state tax revenue if we can show that our numbers are what we think they are. So please, please send those back in to us. And uh, every time I get up here, I'm going to plug the census. Tonight before you uh, is a resolution. That resolution is in support and acknowledgement of the 2040 transportation plan. I'd like to give you a little brief history on the transportation plan that's, um, that, that the resolution is about. In 2014, we started a 2035 comprehensive plan for development for our city. All of that 2035 plan, which covers roads, it covers water, sewer, it covers land development. It's a 20 year plan for us and it has been adopted with exception of chapter three. Chapter three is a mobility and transportation section. Tonight, we're asking you to consider acknowledgement of that. The planning uh, commission actually approved the transportation plan on November the 8th unanimously. Uh, Mr. Sam Huddleston's here tonight. He's gonna give a brief PowerPoint. Staff will be here to answer any questions after that PowerPoint as well as the consultants are here tonight. Uh, after that, there's no public hearing necessary, but we'd ask that you consider this for approval afterwards. Uh, and at this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Huddleston. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Good evening, Mayor McFarland, members of the council, Sam Huddleston, City of Murfreesboro. Um, first, I want to recognize our team, uh, folks that played an important part of developing the 2040 major transportation plan. Uh, of course, I want to recognize our city management team, Mr. Lyons, Mr. Crumley, and Ms. Moody, who uh, played a critical role in it in advising and, and directing. And then Mr. Whitaker and Mr. Blomley from the planning department. Mr. Blomley was a last minute scratch tonight, and uh, but we do appreciate his uh, assistance on that. Our transportation director, Mr. Kerr, and assistant director, Mr. Balachandra, are here. Our city engineer, Mr. Chris, Gri Mr. Chris Griffith, is here. And then from Neil Schaefer, uh, Mr. Dana Richardson, and Mr. Greg Judy, who are all important parts of that. I did leave a uh, couple items at your uh, chairs uh, just before the meeting. One of those is a chronology. Uh, it's where we've been on developing this edition of the major transportation plan. And it covers not all of the elements, but the major milestones, starting with some of our workshops and then concluding with the approval of the plan by the Planning Commission on November the 8th. Another piece of information I left at your uh, table was a, actually this was in your agenda package and this is a larger printed copy of the map uh, that includes the projects on the 2040 plan as well as our short-term, mid-term and long-term improvements and we've uh, prioritized those. And I got that on 11 by 17 just for ease of a review and viewing. And so we are here tonight to, to talk about the uh, city's 2040 major transportation plan. You know, all the projects that we look at have, have three common elements, all the road projects we look at. Uh, they have an identified need. Each project we do has an identified need. Each project we do uh, has funding. It's, uh, and then each project we do has a place to build it. And so we like to say that, um, that each project has a need uh, and then to, to fulfill that need, we need uh, money to build it with and a place to build it. And so the first three reasons for us to adopt a major transportation plan cover those three reasons. Uh, identifying the needs, addressing those needs, and then it helps uh, the city as we identify our capital needs for budget planning. Uh, the third bullet there then is the identification and preservation of right of ways needed to build those road systems. This is a pretty important tool uh, to the planning process as we review development plans and, uh, and projects that come before us. We use this document to help identify and protect those uh, locations. 
And then the third, uh, the fourth reason that, that this uh, adopting a major transportation plan is important to our community is it provides that information to our community. It's good public information. It's out there for public consumption. It's also out there for us as a community as we make public decisions, uh, locations of schools and fire stations, uh, major projects as we look at land use and zoning. And then it helps the private decision makers, uh, a, a new residence purchase, um, perhaps a land decision. All of those uh, reasons are, are why we've uh, proposed and adopt a, a major transportation plan as a community. So we like to look back. I think we have a very good story to tell here. Since 1997, 21 years, we have uh, constructed 83 projects. That's the average of one every three months being bid. Uh, that source of funding, city, county, state, federal, and local sources. Those 83 projects have uh, cost uh, 350 million. Uh, an interesting point is that last bullet, uh, only 52% of that has been city funds. And so we've been able to leverage uh, 50 cents on the dollar for roadway improvements in the city of Murfreesboro to ben our, benefit our citizens, uh, 50 cents on the dollar. And that's as we look back the, the past 21 years. Uh, we still have projects in the queue. We still have projects we're working on. Uh, 30 of those projects um, are in the queue. And those projects, again, include funding from all of those sources, uh, projected cost of $316 million. Um, and again, I think this is a good story to tell. Uh, we've leveraged that expenditure, again, about 50 cents on the dollar uh, to get 350 or $316 million worth of improvements. Uh, the city expenditure is estimated at $150 million. And you see a pie chart here that represents that total projected spending for about 25 years worth of projects, uh, $670 million. I would like to point out as we look at the dollars, these were dollars that were accumulated at the time they were spent. They have not been adjusted forward to a present worth value, nor have they been adjusted forward for a future worth value, but that were actually the records that we have in our database of the actual cost and expenditures. So where are we going? Uh, well, it's time for a new transportation plan. The current major thoroughfare plan we're working on was adopted in 2003. We have a, uh, amended that a couple times, but we're quickly approaching the end of the uh, horizon, the planning horizon, really the last third of that planning horizon. Uh, the 2040 plan gives us uh, a plan for the next 25 years. It, it also inc incorporates current information, uh, primarily the recommended land use plan in the 2035 comprehensive plan and also incorporates new information on growth and needs for our community. And so our study area included the, of, co of course, the city limits shown in white and then the gray area around the city limits, our planning boundary called the urban growth boundary. Uh, but it's interesting to note here that, that our <coughs> projects often don't stop at our political boundaries and we often work with our neighbors, uh, town of Smyrna and Rutherford County and that's no exception with the projects that we'll look at in the 2040 major transportation plan. Three major themes. The first theme uh, was improved connectivity. That's really represented by the six blue arrows on this uh, map. Uh, and, and we really uh, see in, in a lot of the projects just improve that connectivity uh, within our community. Uh, I think most of you are aware that about half of our population lives west of I-24 and about half of it lives east of I-24. And so a lot of the projects you see will help uh, improve that connectivity. Um, another thing that you will note about our community, I-24 and 840 serve as a barrier sometimes to that connectivity, as does the CSX Railroad and the Stones River and its tributaries. And so you'll see a lot of projects in here that um, improve that connectivity by addressing those geographic barriers. Um, the second major theme is improved corridor capacity on that north, uh, northwest to southeast corridor, and that's represented by the green arrow in the middle. Uh, and that's um, you know, primarily getting traffic in and out of our community. You might call it the daily driver, you might call it the commuter, but you might also call it that traffic that flows between our community and, and uh, the, the major Nashville metropolitan area. And then the third theme I really like to call is uh, the theme where we close the gap. We, we connect the dots between some 
major road elements. And so these, these uh, three themes summarize most of the projects that are recommended in our plan. Uh, this is the actual road projects on a map. Uh, that's in your packet, and I left that for you uh, in, a, in a printed version uh, for your review. There are two additions that we made as a result of the um, public review process. We extended uh, Bradeville Pike from its current um, location on this map to, uh, to its intersection with Joe B. Jackson Parkway. And then we also extended, uh, uh, recommended an extendment of, of Blackman Road from its current termination at Manson Pike I'd actually include that stretch that goes from Manson Pike down to Veterans Parkway. The project summarized, or the plan summarized by 30 carryover projects and then 46 new projects gives us a total of 76 projects for the next 25 years. Obviously, we're not gonna build those 76 projects all at the beginning, and so we prioritize those uh, short-term, mid-term, and long-term, and, and those projects are listed on the sheets uh, that I laid before you before the meeting. Uh, Short-term projects would really cover the first third of that planning horizon, um, and that's divided uh, into 25 projects. For this, for this group, for the folks that are here today, for the short term, these are the projects you'll see coming back before you as, as priority projects as we move those ahead. Hey Sam, can I stop you right there? Absolutely. Just while we're talking about that. So I noticed on the long-term improvement projects, Old Salem uh, widening, Castle Street to Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Which road is Old, is old Salem? Is it uh, back there on, uh, is it the one that goes by the, the church and all the way out to? Yeah, there, there, are a couple, there are a couple stretches of Old Salem in our yeah. community. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And the, the stretch that this refers to is Old Salem uh, Veterans Parkway uh, to State Route 99. I'm not sure which, uh, no, uh, Castle Street to Middle Tennessee Boulevard, the number one priority on the long term. That's the one that would go from the, the brewery slash. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Manufacturing. That's right. And that's the, the, there's this old Salem stretch there that's in the downtown area. That was a need identified in the uh, historic bottoms plan to improve that uh, a corridor connection out of the center part of the bottoms. Is, Ca uh, is Castle on the north side of the railroad or is it on the south side? It'd be it on is the on the east side of the railroad I mean, and Castle actually, uh, Castle actually uh, is east and west of Church Street. So there's an east castle, there's an east castle and a west castle and this, this refers to west castle or, or as it's uh, notably known, Castle Street and it's right there in the Clark Iron and Metal. Yeah, so does it come all the Hickerson. way to Clark? Or does it, is it start on the other side of the railroad track? I'm just curious. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how we, where it would go if it just ended. Oh, Castle Street. Well, right now, Old Salem ends at an intersection at the intersection of Front and Castle. Okay. All right, I got you. Hooper. Right there at Hooper gotcha. Supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hooper yeah got it. And then it extends out to Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Got it. Uh, Samson, Samsonite and, and um, Sledgecraft. All right, got it. Sorry. Thanks. Not a problem. I, I'm, I'm, questions come up, certainly. Uh, we'll stop the presentation discussing any items you, you uh, mayor and council would wish to discuss. Sam, discuss while, on while Rick is interrupting, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> would it be okay if I ask why I don't see Jones Boulevard on the short term? Sure. Why is Jones Boulevard? <laughs> <on the short -term? laughs> Sorry for that dramatic pause. Bam. Um, Bam. Bam. Jones, uh, <laughs> one of the things you will not see in the recommended projects are committed projects. Okay. And so projects, the, the committed projects that we referred to in that um, intermediate slide, we said, where are we going? Where have we been? That, that discussed the last 21 years. Where are we going? That discusses projects that are committed but not yet built. And that includes projects like Thompson Lane, Cherry Lane, Jones Boulevard, Rucker Lane, uh, Brinkley Road. Those are all projects we've committed to build. We've got uh, skin in the game at this point and, uh, and uh, a commitment from this body in some form or fashion in engineering, design, construction, joint funding, um, uh, agreements with TDOT and so forth. And so the, the reason you don't see that in the recommended projects is, is we're actively pursuing that uh, to get it to construction. May I ask you if 
how, exactly how many projects there are that are committed already. Uh, it, I, I think you just named. I'm going to have to poll the audience if that's okay because I don't <laughs> have that number right in front of me, but, but perhaps Mr. Richardson or one of the other team members have got that number in front of them. Just roughly. Four? 30. 30. 30. <laughs> okay. Actually, let me see if that's correct. Uh, that was referenced in one of our slides here, I do believe. I should have asked if I could ask. Yes, that's right. It was covered in that slide. Uh, the circles, yeah. Current and completed projects. There are currently uh, 30 committed projects. Okay. Thank you. 316 million. Not to confuse, be confused with the 30 carryover projects. <laughs> Happen to be the same number there. And so the, um, the city staff and, uh, and our team looked at these projects and based on the needs in our, our community, uh, and, I, and I might say the, the modeling that we did with the traffic counts, which help identify uh, capacity issues for us, um, we, we went after some of those capacity issues pretty hard in this first, first term uh, to help identify those needs that are, that are identified right now. Uh, part of the 2035 uh, effort 2035 comprehensive plan included anticipating or predicting or projecting where our growth areas would be for the next 5, 10, and 15 years. And so that information also fed into our major transportation plan and uh, prioritization of projects. Obviously, we can see the next three to five years fairly well. Beyond that, the horizon and the information gets a little less clear, but uh, what you'll see is, is our effort, staff's effort, to, to focus on the 25 projects rep represented as short-term projects. Uh, we, we also uh, realize that from time to time, projects of opportunity show up. Uh, a developer um, comes to town and uh, a project becomes available to us, and so occasionally we'll move uh, some of these projects up because there's a project of opportunity and we've been very successful in the past in leveraging those uh, opportunities to build some roadways for, uh, you know, 50 cents on the dollar and so forth. And so, uh, but this is our uh, recommendations of our prioritization for these projects over the next 25 years. And the funding on that breaks down this way. It's a, it's a, it's a billion dollars. Those are today dollars. Um, since we don't know exactly when we're going to build those projects, we can't uh, escalate those to a future worth. And so just keep in mind as we look back at the, at the, the projects that we've built or committed to now, uh, 670 million uh, in 25 years uh, when, when the city of Murfreesboro's capabilities were less, our community's needs were less. And so we're, we're asking and recommending that you um, approve this resolution that would uh, would take us into the, uh, the next 25 years of our transportation uh, projects. I might add just one one piece to what Mr. Huddleston uh, just said. You know, obviously we've identified projects for the next uh, 25 years. You know, however, when it comes time for individual projects to be funded, uh, City Council will have multiple opportunities to. Uh, talk about those to ensure uh, it's affordable that we can handle uh, the funding for these projects so there are no dollars attached to this those funding decisions for individual road projects will be made by the council uh, through the CIP process through initial resolutions through bond issues uh, so you'll have multiple opportunities to uh, look at the funding and make decisions at that point in time uh, for, so for either one of you guys um, I mean, do you have a plan in place to try to to include this, include this body on the prioritization piece of this. I mean, I, I see that from an engineering standpoint, you know, you guys have placed a priority on the, some of these things, but I mean, is there a way that, you know, that we might look at some of these, you know, I can look at one or two of these on here that I can already tell will be, you know, uh, large turnout at the public hearing kind of things, um, where there would be some pretty significant controversy. Um, and frankly, it may not be something we want to do um, to, as a body. Uh, and so rather than just putting that on our agenda one Thursday night, is there any plan in place to, to involve us in this process? Um, you know, I got called a subhuman money grubbing. Stop there. You know what? <laughs> uh, in an email Time out. Uh, this week over, over a project that's on a plan that I had, you know, basically nothing to do with. Um, and so I guess 
at some point or another, I think it might be appropriate to bring us in on it. I don't know, you know, to some level, just enough for us to kind of say, hey, maybe we think this might be where we have a priority. If we so can set that up a when workshop. you guys bring it to us, yeah, we'd be glad to set up a workshop first part of the year. Smooth. Sure, and and only and, if everybody else wants to, but. My Mr. Lance, I, I'd say this: we're um, we're, we're here to execute your vision. We're we're recommending this vision. We're recommending these projects um, on this uh, major transportation plan tonight. Uh, but in reality, w w staff and, and and management, we appreciate um, any insight you would give us on on your thoughts on prioritization. We we've got our thoughts and ideas based on the technical look at it, and the practical look at it, and the needs. And funding, and and you know, reviewing things like what's Tdot doing, what's the, what are the growth growth patterns doing, and so we we consider we're considering that information, but we would certainly appreciate any insight or input that uh, mayor and council would have in help helping shaping that vision for us, um, and then uh, your priorities become our priorities. Uh, and, and so we, I think Mr. Lyons mentioned it, that the workshop, and that's one of the discussions we had earlier, that, that uh, a workshop to let you know which projects out of those uh, 25 or so that are in the short-term list, uh, staff's ready to focus on right away. Uh, we're ready to bring uh, some action to this board for approval for study, planning studies, uh, which are fairly low dollar amounts, but what it does is it starts that project rolling. And so those are the, there's about six or seven that, that we've looked at off of this list of 25 uh, that we've discussed and we think we'd like to bring back to this board uh, for action uh, individually, uh, each one of those six or seven projects. Um, and we think they'll meet a, a fairly immediate need uh, uh, to, and, and, and now's the time for us to get going on. Is any of these 25 short-term projects on the CIP? My expectation is no, because if it's on the CIP, we generally look at that as a committed project, so it would be in, in that list of projects that, um, that, that were mentioned very early in the presentation. Since, since, we, but, haven't, since we haven't approved the CIP yet, you, in, your, in our workshop, if we have one, we need to make sure we're delineating between what we're approving in the CIP versus what you're talking about in this next level, okay? Well, uh, it, and I think it's important. That's that's why we haven't approved the CIP yet is because we're not sure the number of dollars we have and and how we're how we're going to allocate those dollars, okay? So let's yes, make sure we're we're square on that, please. And, and I think Mr. Mr. Griffiths punched me here. He'd like to step in, so I'm going to step aside because he's the boss. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Mr. Lance, we have, we've actually started looking at some, uh, some of the projects that we're looking at on the current CIP and making maybe some adjustments, not necessarily, um, um, you know, scrapping any projects or anything, but certainly uh, moving some around on, on future years, uh, maybe not necessarily this year. Of course, what, as Mr. Hudson was, was uh, uh, alluding to, a lot of the initial work that's done on these, fairly low dollar, uh, we're hoping maybe even to absorb them as part of our general fund, some of the studies just to, uh, to make sure we got the, or try to really try to nail down the alignments and uh, looking at some of the routes that we're taking. It's really a lot of the routes that are, that are shown on, on these uh, plan sheets are really just straight line connections or really uh, maybe looking at a, uh, an existing road that could be widened, but there may be a, a better route to take. Um, I, I know uh, just s some of the projects that uh, we've discussed, uh, we've already looked at two or three routes, but it may be a third or fourth that we want to, uh, to, to consider further. So that's the kind of studies, just kind of nail down routes and then the engineering would come, come later after that. But to answer your original question, yes, we have looked at uh, some that we may even want to, um, if, uh, if, if if the count mayor and council wants to move forward with it, that we would add to the CIP. Well, and just, I mean, for what Bill's question was, I think it's just important to make sure that we know when we're, the next time we get together, you know, which, which ones are which, which ones have you already put under the committed section because okay. they're in the CIP because, and then, then we've got these that are next 
um, so that we don't get them confused on which or which so that we know how much money we're spending. Sure, absolutely. We can do that. Whether or not that kind of matches our priorities too, I suppose. So. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do that. We'll do that. <coughs> Chris, while you're up there, at, not, not to keep Sam sitting down, but <laughs> at, uh, I want to publicly thank you for the fantastic job you've done in the last three or four weeks of getting the bridge on at um, Bill Jones Bridge on Medical Center Parkway as well as Jones Boulevard next to the water tank. I mean, there were significant bumps and road damage there in, the, in those roadways and uh, called you about it less than a month ago and uh, because of complaints I'd received from the fire department and their trucks having trouble with, with those roadways. And as of today, those problems have been resolved. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for the fantastic job you did of getting those repaired. Thank you, Councilman. That's very kind. We, uh, we appreciate folks taking the time and, and letting us know about the problems. We try to be everywhere, but uh, it, it's always good to, uh, to, to be made aware of any, any problems that we need to address. But thank you for your kind words. I'm gladly remain seated for that one, Mr. Snow. <laughs> so um, we'll wrap up right here. I, a couple of things we need to do, uh, staff th and, and our team need to do uh, as it uh, addresses the transportation needs of our community. Um, complete our individual project sheets. And we, we put a lot of detailed information in there about the sponsor of the project, uh, the source of the funding, the type of roadway it is, and, and Mr. Kerr, and, and previously, Mr. Richardson did a fantastic job of maintaining those individual project shoots and updating those every time that there was a change or, or additional information to add. And then the other thing we really need to do to complete the major transportation plan and the 2035 comprehensive plan, we need to complete the mobility chapter. The major transportation plan is a very significant element of that, but it's not the only thing that's addressed there. And so our, uh, our consultant, and we'll, uh, they will uh, c continue the drafting of that mobility chapter, which will address all forms of transportation and not just, uh, not just roadways, uh, along with some other information. And, and that chapter is missing from the currently adopted 2035 plan. Our, our goal is to get that drafted and back through the uh, review and approval process uh, to be included in the 2030 comprehensive plan. And so our, our team's ready to answer any additional questions you may have. Uh, we do recommend approval of the resolution that will be the next action on the agenda uh, for, for you tonight. Any questions for staff? Thank you. There's no questions or comment. I move for approval. Second. second. Motion Always. second. Ms. Wright, we'll call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all your hard work. Uh, we'll consider recommendations of the Assistant City Attorney with regards to master agreements with Crown Castle, a master antenna attachment agreement, and a master license agreement regarding use of the city right away. Uh, yes, Mayor, Council Members, uh, thank you. Uh, the, an appropriate segue, I guess, from the uh, movement of motor vehicles uh, and transportation now to the movement of uh, telephone calls and data. Uh, as we grow and as the demand for cell phone service and uh, cellular data increases, uh, we have uh, uh, need for more and uh, a variety of antennas and other devices to, to make uh, that system work. Uh, we have uh, representatives of Crown Castle here tonight. They're gracious enough to come down and be here if there are any questions. Uh, before I go through my short, hopefully short presentation, I would like to introduce, since they've made the effort to come here, uh, Ms., uh, let's see, in order, they are Kelly Rogers, uh, Victoria Wiedenthaler, uh, Eric, o uh, no, Jason Kofinder and Eric O'Brien are here from Crown Castle. Uh, Crown Castle is uh, in, is a, a ready to start on a, a project to install uh, small cell antennas on several uh, combination of primarily MED poles, 
uh, and perhaps some city light poles. This particular project will run from roughly from uh, near Clark on Broad Avenue. It'll run down Broad from Clark to uh, South Church and essentially Old Fort from Broad out almost to Thompson Lane. Uh, there will be a number of antennas attached to existing poles. Uh, they may need to actually replace some poles uh, that will need to be changed out in order to accommodate the antenna. That in will also involve two more agreements, one of which is a standard pole attachment agreement with MED. That agreement has been approved and is ready to go. Uh, it's not before you tonight. That uh, is only an MED agreement and it's consistent with the other pole attachment agreements that MED uh, has in place with other carriers. Uh, the second agreement, in a way the first agreement, but the first one before you tonight is we, we're calling it an antenna attachment agreement and that is an agreement uh, that will be both with MED and to the extent necessary with the city to the extent that it involves city light poles or any other pole that the city as opposed to MED uh, as, as, an op as a department of the city uh, owns and controls. And then the third agreement uh, is a use of the right-of-way agreement uh, for that uh, uh, for installation of conduit for running uh, a fiber optic cable in the right-of-way underground. Uh, the antenna attachment agreement that's before you is based substantially on the MED pole attachment agreement. Uh, there are a lot of similarities. It is a piece of equipment that will be attached to a, an existing pole. There are some differences because the configuration of an antenna uh, as opposed to uh, that's going to be attached someplace on the pole and perhaps some accessory equipment uh, also on the pole is, is different than attaching a, a, uh, either a copper or a fiber optic cable to, to the pole. Uh, and then the, uh, the underground agreement is uh, very consistent with one we had put in place with uh, companies uh, prior to this that have also done, uh, none of those companies have put in small cell antennas, but they have installed underground fiber optic cable in our rights of way. Uh, the, there is only one, one change to the document that was provided to you, and that is in the uh, attachment B to the right of way agreement. Uh, Crown Castle is agreeing to provide the city with up to eight dark fibers uh, for the fiber that they install uh, both underground and uh, overhead within the city. In that agreement, there's a provision that uh, if, there are, if there is a problem that the city asks them to troubleshoot and find the location of the, of the, of the problem, that if the problem in, is on the city's side, uh, of, the, of, of the system as opposed to being out in Crown Castle's fiber, then the city will reimburse them the cost of that uh, troubleshooting uh, effort. Uh, that was inadvertently taken out of that agreement by me. It was supposed to stay there uh, and we would propose to put that back in. Uh, I think that's really the high point, so I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Uh, and if you've got specific technical questions about the systems, I think uh, Crown Castle representatives would be able to uh, discuss that with you. What's the term of the agreement? Both of these are 10-year agreements, and they're, they're automatically renewed unless a party elects to terminate. Either party? Either party may terminate. For any reason? Correct. And there's also some uh, termination for uh, cause for a default if uh, if there's a default that, that we that either party could terminate if there's a default is this an exclusive uh, contract that re is can other people put antennas up this is uh, we could not make what well, we cannot legally make this exclusive so it's a non-exclusive contract uh, the limitation is space so for instance, on an MED pole, there is a finite amount of space that's available for communications carriers. Uh, if that space is filled up and another carrier wants to come in, there is a process whereby a replacement pole can be put in 
that's taller and has and allows more space. Uh, obviously, that's a cost. That's a cost to the carrier that wants to come in. And the same with with right now, if there's a pole that they want to go on to that's full that doesn't have any space on it, it would be up to them to. Uh, I guess essentially a workaround or variety, you know, maybe you go underground at that area, maybe you uh, install a five or 10 foot taller pole uh, to create more communication space. And how many, but how it's many? not exclusive, we, we have, and we will and we have to allow any, any. Uh, authorized carrier on a non-competitive, uh, non-discriminatory non basis to, to come in. How, how many antennas are we talking? This project has what? <laughs> she, she, 15? Uh, no, there's uh, 12. 12, okay. There's 12 antennas in this, in this project. Now, I think we anticipate that uh, not only Crown Castle will come in at some point putting in more, but other carriers and other companies are, are, will be coming in to put antennas in similar places and, and, and in other places. And there's a fee that it's attached to this 13? Yes, the, there is not a fee as such for the underground, uh, for the underground use of the right of way. For the pole attachment with MED, uh, the fee is, uh, I think it's 29.97, but round numbers, it's $30 per year per pole uh, per attachment, and that's the same as other, uh, uh, as we're charging with other companies. Uh, and How so much e is that again? Cause it's not expensive, $30 per year per pole. Now, the antenna, oh. the fee to attach an antenna is at twelve fifty per year okay. per pole. Okay. The, the antennas are configured differently. You've got a different weight issue. You've got different engineering issues. Uh, and the, the pole attachment fee, now this is to attach a horizontal uh, fiber optic cable or, or copper cable to a pole is uh, regulated and influenced significantly by TVA. Uh, TVA at this point has not uh, weighed in on the fees that can be charged for attaching an antenna. They may do that and it may be higher or lower than, uh, w than what we're proposing in this agreement. Yeah, but just as a very general, the, the large, we call macro cell towers that stick up a couple hundred feet around town essentially provide coverage. The small cells are being, is one of the methods being used to provide more capacity. Coverage, yeah. uh, and they provide coverage if you've got a small isolated area that, that's not getting covered, you could put up one of these a lot cheaper than you can build a 250 foot macro antenna, uh, but this is to provide additional coverage and, and additional capacity, I'm sorry, additional capacity for the m mountains and mountains of data that we are all wanting to uh, transmit back and forth on our wireless devices. Would you mind coming up to the microphone here? Just quickly. Thank you for your time. Yeah, and so the only other benefit is that we see this as a public safety benefit too as well. So not only is it capacity and coverage, but also provides better benefits for public safety as well. Okay, thank you. All right, any questions? No other questions, I move for approval. Uh, second. We we'll have a motion and second for the master antenna attachment agreement. All right. Yeah, I guess we should do them separately, thank you. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Way. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye, can we now have a motion for the master license agreement regarding city use, or use of city right away? Yes. So moved. Motion. Does this mean there'll be more people driving looking at their cell phones? Mm. Can we get them to where they look like a tree at the second. top? Second. <laughs> second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright. 
Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll consider for adoption resolution 17R29, redesignating representatives of the Edward Bond Memorial Justice Grant JAG program. Mayor, this resolution is required for us to do the reporting we need to do for the JAG grants we have through uh, the federal government. The employees who were already appointed are no longer in the city's employment with the police department. And so we're trying to get back where we should be with our reporting. And one of the employees is fairly new, so my office is going to assist in that until they have an opportunity to be able to take that on themselves. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Mr. Wright, call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We have uh, one board and commission recommendation to the Tennis Committee appoint Ms. Beth Brown to replace Mr. Shane Reeves. <laughs> motion. So, so moved. Second. Motion to second, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. You have several beer permits. Ms. Wright. We do. Uh, let me start by, I'm going to go through them quickly, but let me start by saying they're all labeled as catering beer permits at the top, and that was just not taken off from a former application. They, these are all regular beer permits. They are not for catering. We have a new restaurant coming to 2314 Medical Center Parkway, Suite A5. They do like their building codes inspections, otherwise that application is in order. We have a new restaurant coming to 2306 Medical Center Parkway, Suite B1. That application also lacks the finishing their building codes inspections, otherwise that application is in order. We have a new truck stop convenience store at 2440, I'm sorry, it's not new, it's an ownership change, at 2441 South Church Street. That application is in order. They do need to finish their building codes inspections before that could be issued. We have an ownership change for a gas station at 2736 Florence Road. That application is in order. They do need to finish the building codes inspections before we could issue that, that permit. We have a ownership change for a restaurant at 505 Case and Lane, Suite E. That application is in order other than completing their building codes inspections. We have an owner, I'm sorry, a name change for a retail convenience store at 110A John Rice Boulevard. That application is in order. We just need to get them to finish up their building codes inspections before we can issue. We have a new location of a fuel station at 2472 New Salem Road. That application is in order. They do need to finish <coughs> the building codes inspections. We have an ownership change for a pharmacy store at 1696 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Another for the same owner for 2528 Oldport Parkway. And another for 2490 South Church Street and 2485 Memorial Boulevard. Those are all an ownership change uh, corporate wide and they are in order except for completing their building codes inspections. I'll uh, be glad to try to answer any questions. We would not issue any of these until building codes has signed off on them. We have a motion for these beer permits. So moved. One second. Motion second. Mr. Wright, we'll call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. Any other, uh, we have any statements, Mr. Wright? No, sir, not tonight. Right. No bills to pay. All right. Any other business to come before the staff or city council? I've got one piece. Mr. LaLance. Um, I, uh, I'm just going to throw this out here for you guys um, to, to find out sort of let you guys think on it really. I don't think I really want to make it in the form of a motion tonight, but um, the, what we've been calling the bridge over broad, I think we probably need to look for a different name. I've talked to a few folks on this and um, to, to sort of honor our first responders and the, the folks that have been here all along in this town taking care of us. Um, you know, my, my proposal would be think about something like a first responders memorial bridge. Um, 
you know, if, if there's other options and other ways we can go about this, that's fine. But I think the process is that we, we have a, a resolution or a motion or whatever we do here to pass that, and then we have to send it on up to the state, I believe, and tell them that we've approved it. Uh, I spoke with a couple of legislators, and they said as long as we send it up to them and it's a, something we all agree on, it's probably pretty likely they're going to agree on it. So just wanted to encompass both, uh, you know, all of the first responder uh, folks here. Um, and that's really the only way I know how to do it. So uh, as far as just uh, with that kind of a title. So anyway, something for y'all to think about. Maybe we can converse over it in a workshop one day or in the next meeting or whatever y'all want to think about or if you have other ideas, let's hear them. Okay. May want to even open it up to the public. If uh, I, I like your idea, I think it's a great idea, and, and certainly recognizing the first responders would be wonderful. Uh, but uh, just so it's not me and you to pick it, it uh, I, 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 might be a good idea to open it up to the public and have some public input as well. So. Rob, if you could take the lead on maybe making sure we get something done on that, rather than uh, continuing to call it Bridge Over Broad for the for the remainder of our uh, lives, and can we call it finished? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope tomorrow to have some more information about the the completion date you know i th think um bell was still targeting um december the 17th 17th um i think staff's been meeting with them uh hopefully i'll have uh, an update for you tomorrow on a definitive date uh clearly when we're at the end of a project you know tdot's in this position the city often is uh, once we turn it over to the public finishing up last minute changes becomes protracted and so I think Bell and TDOT are trying to figure out what they can get done uh, before they open it up to the public so that any remaining items um, can be done uh, without having to disrupt uh, traffic or, or delaying the, the process. So I hope to have more definitive date uh, for you, hopefully by the, uh, tomorrow, uh, but certainly by the first of the week. Uh, just to get some clarification, uh, Mr. Smotherman mentioned getting some public input. Uh, you know. I, we're glad to help you with the naming of it. I know the Bridge Over Broad's kind of been that placeholder is, you know, just a little bit more clear understanding about exactly what you want us to, to do next. The first responders, a, a terrific idea. I certainly support that, and, uh, but just do we want to have a public input process or do you want me to skip, put this on next week's agenda? Maybe a Facebook, I don't know, uh, maybe Jennifer could put something on Facebook, see if there's anybody who makes any comments about it or whatever, and, and if not, we'll or whatever we'll yeah, take what yeah. they take what they have to say I, I don't know what else we can do how about we do um you know we've got a, a the parks and recreation department posted a, a thing on yeah. you know the we do something like what parks and rec just did for the west park oh, yeah. and yeah. that way it gives a, a database for some feedback we can look at it and make okay. a decision from there all right well we'll open it up in december to get that kind of uh, feedback May even put some signage up right next to the bridge right now and name this bridge. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, just uh, sure. people sitting there at the intersection, give them the opportunity to ride by and go, hey, I know what I want to call this thing. In case y'all haven't clicked on dnj.com lately, I stand by that bridge pretty much every day in that same black golf shirt. Have y'all noticed? <laughs> <laughs> and the, funny, the, funny thing, the funny thing is the status when they took that picture back in the summer is pretty much the same status it is right now. <laughs> I, I have a friend that affectionately calls the bridge old rusty already, so yeah. apparently he likes it. No, if we can't make fun of ourselves, who can we make fun of? <laughs> right? Can't laugh at ourselves. Leadership Rutherford, thank y'all for being here. Mr. Sweeney, thank you for good seeing y'all. Any other business to come before the council? Mayor, could I just say, like uh, Mr. Whitaker did for the census, I'd like to put in a plug to remind citizens that our tax due date is coming up the end of December, actually the very first of January because of holidays. My office has gotten a lot of calls that people are saying they didn't get a bill. Uh, more than usual, I mean, that happens, but more than usual, uh, the bills are available online. They can call my office. We'll be glad to mail another one or email one. So if you hear anybody saying anything about that, please refer them to us. We're happy to help them. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Mitchell coming over to the office Monday to talk to him about it. His office does print and mail those bills, and we're trying to work with him to see what, what else we might do. I'm trying to put advertisements out. Uh, Mike Browning's been good about doing a video for us, and it's on social media. So... We're just trying to get the word out there. I don't want people being upset when they're late in January because they didn't get a bill. Even if it's a courtesy bill, it, it hurts their feelings a little bit to be told that they're late. So we'd, we'd like to put that word out as often as possible. And 
for those who got multiple bills, you only have to pay them once. They only have to pay them once, yep. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened this year, but we, we're glad to help them work through their concerns. Hmm. Awesome. All right, seeing no other business, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>